Welcome, everybody, to another fantastic episode of History on Q. Yo, this show is fantastic because it allows us a sneak peek or a behind-the-scenes peek into some of the best state parks here in California. And if you don't know, uh, California State Parks and the Ports Program and Q, we have a grant together to uh, bring students to the parks through field trips. So definitely take a look at CaliforniaStateParks.gov and take a look at that Passports grant. But we also have something fantastic here that I want my co-host Daniel to talk about. It's about going on an adventure with your fourth grade students. So here we go. My co-host, uh, my, my, my sleuth of words, Daniel, welcome to the show. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, hi, everybody. My name is Daniel Williford. I'm a California State Park interpreter, as well as the Adventure Pass Programs Coordinator for California State Parks. Let, let's talk and a little you, bit about the Adventure, Adventure, Adventure Pass, because this year's uh, season of History on Q is all about the Adventure Pass, the different state parks that are part of this program. Can you let our viewers know if this is the first show they've watched what the Adventure Pass program is? I certainly will. It's a free pass for fourth graders. Um, where they are, uh, where when they sign up on our website, they can get their free pass and they can get into 19 uh, select California state parks for free day use. And not just the fourth grader, but who's ever with them. That means family and friends who's ever in the car can get into one of these 19 state parks for free by just going to that web page that we see tickering across the bottom of the screen there to find out more information and to sign up for that free pass. So the fourth grader just needs mom or dad or a guardian to help them sign up for the pass. They can download it onto a digital device and or print it up. And then, then they've got these 19 state parks to go and adventure in. And today we're going to Millerton Lake. Yes. State Recreation Area. I'm which so is one excited. Of our parks. I, I'm I am so excited. excited. Uh, Daniel, I'm so excited because this is my park. This is the park that I grew up with. This is the park that in high school and college we would go to every weekend and just have the glory of Millerton Lake. Uh, and I want everybody who's watching, if you are a CVQ affiliate member, this is your park too. So grab your fourth grader, grab a niece or nephew who's a fourth grader just don't grab any fourth grader that's not that's not right yeah. <laughs> but just grab a fourth grader and go to this park but let's visit it right now who who who, who we're bringing on the show right now daniel well we have got a very special person coming on screen right now he's a state park interpreter his name is eduardo gonzalez and there he is right there, there is. at miller tonight <laughs> hey eduardo. what's going on Welcome. joe and daniel how you doing we're doing great. Yeah, That's a fantastic you? view behind All you, my right. friend. I mean, you can't beat it, really. <laughs> I mean, here we are, just like literally within 20 minutes from Fresno. And I mean, it, it's here. It's just waiting for you. I mean, it's inviting as can be. Don't you just uh, want to go take a dip in there? I mean, we still have a few hot days here in the valley. Uh, so, you know, that's it's, it's one way to take advantage of this place. That's for sure. No, it's great. And this is right up Friant, right? You can go right up Friant. Uh, th there was a, a really great uh, breakfast place there called the Dam Diner uh, because it's right next huh. to the Friant Dam. Uh, really great breakfast. We would love to stop there. Uh, <laughs> but so, so, Eduardo, Millerton Lake has been part of my life for many, many years. Um, but, you know, not a lot of people know the history of the park can you tell us a little bit about how millerton lake came to be and how it came to be a, a a state a california state park yeah sure i mean well this place here as you can see it's very much a lake but it's not it's not a natural lake it's a reservoir it is indeed man-made and it is formed due to the creation of the friant dam which is uh this huge concrete wall here behind me uh that hey. basically whoosh, nearly a kilometer long and uh, 319 feet tall. So imagine if you were to stick the Statue of Liberty psh, right there in the deepest part, it's, uh, its torch would literally be just at the top, just about the same size as, as the Statue of Liberty. And uh, so, yeah, so that door, that dam there formed the lake. It was finished being built in 1942. And uh, I mean, it's like, well, why in the world would you do that? If, if I mean, why would why would you build a dam uh, such as this to, to to create a lake? I mean, if you had a beautiful river, and I mean, if I turn my 
my phone around here. Maybe, uh, maybe we can see. It might be a little bit too far off in the distance, but you might be able to see a little uh, greenery down there of the San oh, yeah, Joaquin River. Yeah. Just down below. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's part of this uh, challenging pickle. Because, I mean, take a look at this landscape here. I mean, uh, taking a look at these hills. I mean, mm -hmm. look at that color. Does that scream an area that uh, gets a whole lot of water? <laughs> yeah. In most parts of the year. Not a whole lot. <laughs> so we have down in the valley, as you know, since you were from here, I mean, our, you know, Central Valley is known for its agriculture. It's known for growing everything from almonds, peaches. I mean, you name it. I mean, we're growing the world's food. It is one of the largest agricultural producers in the world. And in order to do that, well, you need a whole lot of water. <laughs> and so... Uh, yeah. There it is. You have this water uh, to be able to Eduardo, feed what, that thirsty valley. Is, yeah. is that a river that's dammed up? What's the name of that river? Yeah, yeah this is the San Joaquin River. Okay. Yeah, that's the second longest river within the state of California behind the Sacramento. So this guy starts up up near Mammoth, a really popular spot for uh, our Southern California oh, friends yeah. that go. So those are the headwaters, and then it comes trickling down these uh, mountains here, whoosh, ends up here at our lake, and then continues its journey all the way out to the San Francisco Bay. So this is only a really small little part of the story. This 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 river um, plays a huge role in California's water. Yeah, and I'm really excited to see how full the uh, the lake is. Uh, you know, for many many years it has been dwindling down farther and farther. But the, uh, <laughs> the 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 torrential rains that we've had these past years have really uh, given given extra water. H has that changed the uh, the visiting of the park? Has that changed uh, people coming in to enjoy the waters of the park? Have you seen an uptick because the the lake is so full? Oh my God! I mean, yes, yes, and no. It's one of those things. Now, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a funny place, right? We just missed it. If we would have been on this show of maybe about a month and a half ago or so, the water would have been up to the tippy tip top. I mean, we were at a hundred and three percent capacity. The water was just going over the spillway at the dam. <laughs> it was amazing. We had so much water. Um, but uh, when that happens, the water rises. So a lot of these little like, uh, you know, land uses and areas disappear. And then there's mm. people like, well, uh, I can't fit. So, I mean, <laughs> it's it's kind of like this balance. I mean, it's great for boaters. It's great, great for uh, kayakers and paddlers. Uh, but, you know, for, for, for us shore folks that just want to go out and take a dip, you, you lose a little bit of real estate. So, you know, yeah, there was there was quite a bit of people. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just this. It's just this balance, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> well, and that's that's very interesting to think about, right? Because yeah. you know, there there's a there's a design to the park, right? And in that design, there's campgrounds, there's day use grounds, and it's there. You're used to having a particular level to the lake, and when the lake rises and covers those areas, you have less of those areas to be utilized yeah. for campers and for day use. So I never thought of it that no. way, but. Thinking backwards in time, since <laughs> since the lake has been the river has been dammed up, there must have been a town along the river, or there were structures along the river. Did anybody have to relocate, or did anybody have? It, are there structures still under the water that were just left to be covered by the the dammed water? <laughs> well, Joe, you bring up an interesting question, and uh, well, yes, I mean. Millerton, the lake, gets its name from the former Millerton, the town of Millerton, which was uh, Fresno yeah. County's first seat. Uh, so it was like the center for the county. Um, and I mean, I guess you could call it a bustling place. Uh, but this was, you know, in the time of the gold rush. We are talking 1850s, 1860s. And uh you know, yeah, there was a lot of activity here. And there was, in fact, a town about two miles upriver here from the dam site. Um, is there anything left? Uh, and the answer is no. And it's like, well, why? Well, why, what do you mean? What happened to that town? Well, uh, an interesting thing. I mean, it's a, it's a really extended history. I'll try to be as brief as possible. 
But, mm. I mean, you have all this, this town along the river. Well, rivers are ways to transport goods in that time of the gold rush. They're a place, well, yeah, you need water. Oh, it, you know what? It's it's the uh, it's the damn weather <laughs> over there. Yep. You know, and 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 those those who are are what? Oh, Edwarder's here. Perfect. I was, hey, I, I was telling everybody <laughs> sometimes problems happen because Miller to Lake is is out in the mountains in Fresno County. It is it is really I, I want to I don't want to say far from civilization, but I want to say it is its <laughs> own little area. Uh, of wilderness, which is fantastic, and sometimes you get a drop of cell signal. So that's Absolutely. what we saw. Right yeah. yeah. Well, so that town, I mean, with, with 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 being along the banks of a river, I mean, you get you get a lot of flooding action. I mean, some years like we had, like this year, we we did experience a bit of flooding here in the state. I mean, this is nothing new. This was happening um, even during those times, and so the water kept rising and would sometimes. Um, cause damage to the town. And uh, mm, right around the 1870s, well, something came to Fresno. And that was the old railroad. The railroad came through Fresno and they're like, yo, forget this Millerton place out there in, 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 in the hills. Let's get to where uh, all the business is happening. And so basically everybody in the town picked up their stuff and moved. And the town became abandoned. It just poof. Like almost overnight, uh, they voted that Millerton would no longer be the, the county seat, making Fresno the county seat. So now all those important businesses, like all important government uh, services, like the courthouse, like the jailhouse, all of those things were put down in the town of Fresno, leaving it by itself. And it's just like, well, well, however, well, then how do we explain uh, that, 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 that thing? Oh, wait, oh, oh, oh there it is. Yeah. That old looking building right over there. Well, wow. that is the original Millerton courthouse that was once, uh, well, way down there. It would find itself several hundred feet beneath the surface of the lake. However, it was preserved. It was basically taken down brick by brick and then reassembled here on this hill. And it's like, well, why in the world would you do that? Why go through all the trouble to save an old, you know, brick building. Well, because for that very reason, I mean, it brings us wonder. You're like, hey, what about that old town? And I mean, well, structures like that remind us of what was once here and the story and the history of this park. And, and just kind of like, hmm, what else was here? Who else was here? And it just kind of gives us these questions to go on uh, just different adventures and to just kind of start to seek answers. And yeah, you know, that's much more to be learned uh, um, about this place, but that's just a little, a little small, a little piece of of the history of this landscape. Yeah, and I I love that story because uh, we we uh, our first episode this season we visited the Sacramento Railroad Museum, and we were talking about how the railroad, the the building of the railroad, really changed how uh, the United States functioned, but we didn't get into how the railroad changed how counties function and how it transferred one epicenter of a county to another epicenter and to hear that story i love that connection because it showcases how important the railroad is to the history of california and to the towns that exist today and to the lakes that exist today that's i love that i mean that's a very beautiful story to be able to connect those two things uh and and, and and daniel uh any any comments on that because i i think that's an amazing story oh it's amazing to think that at one time a town that's no longer there was probably bigger than fresno and then and it became a ghost town you know um and joe you nailed it the railroad that was such a big mover and shaker during that time that it, it, it caused the whole town to be abandoned and to set it up right near the railroad where they could you know move their goods and be a part of that bigger scene of commerce and business and, and development so and, and what are, i have a a comment question for you uh, and you alluded to this at the top of of, of uh your introduction the the area we're in there's lots of water but it's very dry 
right? It's very dry. We see all the grass. There's no greenery. When we think of lakes, we think of trees and we think of grass. And so when people would see this, they're probably like, wait a minute, if, if that's a lake and there's lots of water, how come everything is so dry? Um, does the does that affect the ecology of the area, the animals of the area, the type of fauna of the area? Does it change per season? Could you talk a little bit about about that aspect of the lake? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked that question because yes, I mean, here we are, you know, hoarding this water really and, and using it strategically for, for specific times of year, but for our own humanly needs. But if we think about the ecology, if we think about the animals that live here, um, some of the things that we're learning in fourth grade is are, are learning about adaptations, how some things survive better than others based on their environment. And here at Millerton Lake, even though things may look dry and dead and kind of desolate, it is exactly the right conditions for them. I mean, that it's it's no mystery why this grass here is uh is so dry and and dead right now. Well, it's too hot. I mean, you know how it is here in the valley. I mean we get several days of well over 100 degrees. And I mean, those just aren't suitable conditions for grasses. It's like, you know what? Let's, 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 go, let's, let's go to sleep for a little while. We'll let our seeds kind of poof, kind of take hold when the rains come. And so these seeds are quietly, patiently waiting in the soil, just waiting for that spring rain to hit and then poof, up. And this place will come alive. We will be green as can be. If you come in say late February, March, April, you won't believe your eyes. This place is covered in wildflowers. Things are green. I mean, it's it's very lush, uh, but you know, nonetheless, but it's like, well, what about everything else year round? Well, I mean, it's, 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 it's sparse with trees, but here I have a little guy right over here. Let's take a look at this very special tree here. And this is the dominant tree species of the uh, of of of, of Mellerton here. Uh, so we are in in a blue oak woodland. Now check it out. Now these guys are the blue oaks, and they have like these really almost like tough, almost really hard, mm -hmm. small leaves. Yeah. Well, those are part of it's even unlike just not just animals that have adaptations, but these plants do too. They're they're yeah. a little bit more rigid. They retain more of the moisture so even though it's hot it's all good it's got huge root systems that were able to anchor itself into the ground and to just use what it needs because again it has adapted over you know thousands of millions of years to this very landscape so it's happy as can be i mean uh even though with with with, with the uh, small amounts of water now some of our crops that we grow aren't as well adapted uh, to this landscape although they grow well but they need a little bit more, well, a lot more water. So therefore we must come up with solutions like these dams uh, to be able to, to feed those thirsty plants. But nonetheless, these guys, yeah, I mean, perfectly adapted for, for this landscape. And that goes for the animals that call this place home, um, you name it, yeah. Yeah, Eduardo, I've got a question. I I've yeah. heard there's bald eagles at Millerton Lake. Is that true? Oh, yes, it is, Daniel. Yes, it is. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm not seeing one now, so to speak. No. But it's it's. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. But we do get. Uh, we have a couple of resident pairs, meaning that they live here year round. They've they've taken a liking to Mellerton Lake and will stay with us. But they spend a lot wow. of their time up up in the river channel. So you got to go up a okay. little further past the main body. But in the winter time, same thing around January, February, we get our migrating bald eagles. So these birds take flight, leave their, when, I mean, their, their summer homes up in the Northern territories of Canada, over 2000 miles and wow. land here in this space to, well, spend their, uh, winter's a little bit more mildly where it's not as cold up there in canada again so they're just uh changing their environment to meet their needs and uh yeah and we're, we're lucky to have them in fact uh, yeah bring a pair of binoculars look up towards the tops of these trees even uh pro tip uh take a look over towards the dam and uh that is a that is a very common 
uh, perching site there. So if you uh, point your binoculars over towards the dam, look at towards the tops of the trees, and uh, ooh, you, you may be surprised at what you see. Yeah. Are there lots of fish in the lake for the eagles to eat? Is is that what one of the things that's bringing them there? Yeah, fish, and believe it or not, uh, coots. They're like these duck-like birds. It is one of their favorite meals. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't know. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and you're probably wondering, like, well, how do I know that? Do I just sit here? And, well, yeah, I've, I've, I've had the opportunity to see an uh, eagle yeah. eat one, uh, a coot or two, and that's pretty mm -hmm. good. Uh, you might mm -hmm. get so lucky. But then uh, sometimes we get weird, and uh, we start doing a little uh, – Things like picking up uh, these, uh, well, let me see if I can open up this jar here. I have with me uh, a pallet. Mm. This is essentially uh, some bald eagle vomit. Oh, it's not really vomit, but it's just like, you know, when they eat those coots, like bleh, swallow it, and then they just kind of start separating that stuff out and bleh, spit it out. <laughs> and then uh, hmm, if you start digging through uh, these pallets here, uh, you can kind of piece together the bones and figure out exactly what it is that they eat. And uh, lo and behold, coot bones and feathers all over the place, you know? <laughs> wow. So bald eagles make a pellet just like owls do as well. Wow. That's cool. right. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty amazing. And I, I, I love the fact that you connected this to fourth grade curriculum because um, you know, part of the Adventure Pass and parts of the Ports program is connecting curriculum uh, with our students, and the Adventure Pass is for fourth grade, so I love that you did that. I have a question for you about uh, visitors. So you're an interpreter at Millerton. You uh, are, are very well uh informed with your job just by the questions we've asked and your amazing answers what what is your greatest experience as an interpreter with visitors like is there a story that's that's like funny or it was a really insightful question and it, you saw their eyes light up by the answer what is like your number one memory in working with students at the park Oh, Joe, I mean, so many great mm -hmm. moments here at the lake. I love having students out at the park. Um, but my, my, I guess one of the, I had, I had a group out here last year from one of their schools. And uh, we went out on a little kind of birding walks. Uh, simple. Here's a pair of binoculars. Let's go see what we can find. And as we're walking around this knob, and again, it was kind of like in March, and just the ground is just covered in wildflowers. And I remember hearing a student say, like, wow, like, now this is nature. And, like, that to me is just, like, just being blown away just, just by the landscape, a landscape that we often associate with this kind of dry, it's man-made, like, just, like, it's just for something. No, there are, there, are, there are just pieces of nature here. And all it takes is just kind of putting on that lens and just kind of giving them the tools to just be like, hey, step away from 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 what you know, the the, the swimming, the the bike riding here, all great. But like, let's take a moment and really connect to the landscape because although it has been altered, we 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 still see a very natural landscape here, and and, and I love connecting students um, to to the to the landscape in that way. Yeah, and I, I love that just just because I know like for me. Millerton is just about 25 minutes away. And sometimes that's a barrier, even, even for our local students to get over that hill, to get there. Um, and, and we have parents that have lived here their entire lives that have never been there. We have students who have lived here their entire lives that have never been there. And so our hope through these episodes is to showcase the parks that are nearest to them. And, and with, through the adventure pass, at least lower the bar of having to pay to get in to experience mm -hmm. the park and, and, and to meet fantastic educators, interpreters like yourself so that they can experience that exact same story that you just told us to experience the glory of nature in their own town, in their own area, in their own County. And I think that's the beauty of the adventure pass and of the program and of the park system and of ports. And that that's one of the reasons that Q loves our partnership. And we love to be able to do these shows to showcase the amazing work that you do. Um, and I think Eduardo at people need to know that there are educators like yourselves in these historic parks 
doing the work day in and day out to keep history alive uh, and to spark uh, imagination in our students outside the walls of their classroom. So I just want to say thank you for everything that you do. No, thank you so much, Joe. Yeah. I mean, please come on out with your families for my fourth grade friends. Talk them into it. We're, we're, we're so close, so close. And this is just that much easier. Look, we can get in for free. And from our teachers too, here in the Valley, if you're a teacher in Fresno, Madeira, Sanger, you name it, come, 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 come and visit us. Let's talk. Let's get your students out here. I mean, if you need me to send a bus, I'll get on the phone. Let's go. Send a bus. I want these kids here. And if we if, if all we can do is meet virtually this year, then let's do it. Let's get you on our ports program um, and, and getting them excited about coming out here to this park. Yeah. Well, I'm going to make that my mission uh, this year. I'm going to make sure I spread the word to all the schools in the Central Valley for Millerton Lake, just as we're spreading the word to all the schools about all the other parks on the Adventure Pass program. So, Eduardo, I want to say thank you so much for being a part of today's program. And I promise I am going to connect with you. I'm going to make it a, uh, a mission to come out and visit you. Uh, maybe we can get a connection where a park uh, a, a school is traveling there and I can go and meet up with you and we can do a whole maybe extension episode on what it truly means to have a field trip at a state park. But I want to say thank you so much, my friend. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Oh, pleasure Eduardo. Mm. Man, Daniel, thank you so much for bringing Eduardo on. He's amazing. I, and it's it, be amazing. I love, I love the, when the passion comes through, in the oh, yeah. explanations and just the joy of their job. Like you could oh. tell he's just stoked to be oh. out there. Like, he I mean, the he exactly. makes it it, it's, <laughs> it's fantastic. And just, just like every other interpreter we've talked to. And I think that's the power of California state parks in Agreed. being able, in being able to identify individuals with a passion to educate in the outdoors. Uh, so yeah. kudos to you, my friend, kudos to your team, kudos to the ports team. Uh, one more chance. We want to give a shout out to the adventure pass uh, again Ooh. for fourth graders in the state of California, um, friends and family that go along with them. Just go to parks.ca.gov slash adventure pass to learn more. The uh, screen or the scroll is down at the bottom of your screen. Yep. Definitely take I'm a look. And the last thing, we always have to sign up with this. It's a little self-serving, but ports will be at Fall Q. All right, awesome. Fall Q is happening uh, this October. So, uh, so please visit up, visit us up in the northern area of Stockton in October. Uh, ports will be there. Talk to them more about their, uh, their programs, uh, field trips to their parks, and all the amazing things that they are doing. All you have to do is head over to fallq.org and register today. Well, Daniel, another successful show, number three in the books. I can't nice. wait to see number four. Uh, we've had so many adventures uh, yes. during the, the past few weeks, and I cannot wait on our next one. So my friend, thank you so much for being a part of the program. Thank you so much, Joe, for all you do, for, for everyone, for educators and for the world. This has been awesome, and I can't wait to meet up with you again. We've got a few things scheduled. We've got Empire Mine State Historic Park, in the on the queue and we've also got uh uh sume and jedediah smith once things kind of settle down with the fires up there we'll, we'll we'll check back in with them and 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 check out some of those gigantic redwoods so lots of good things coming up lots of great things lots of th great things to look forward to but until then don't forget history happens every day and it also happens on history on cue have yourselves a wonderful wonderful week